Today I am having a drink with Nancy Bertler, who is a climate scientist with Victoria University of Wellington. So a climate scientist is somebody who looks at the longer term trends of how our climate uh, behaves and changes. So this is quite different from meteorology, mm. where you might look on a day to day basis. We are sort of interested in maybe decadal to longer time. So I'm going to draw for you some results from an ice core in Antarctica. So we have some amazing ice core records from Antarctica that sort of go back um, almost a million years now. And what they showed us was what we already knew from the physics, the close relationship between global temperature and concentration in greenhouse gases. So this is a timeline here and this is today and this is going into the future. So this is temperature and what we found for CO2 was that for all intents and purposes, they looked very, very similar. We know of course now from anthropogenic emissions that greenhouse gases have increased greatly. So now we can look at the comparison between greenhouse gases now and see when it was the last time that we saw elevations like this. So we are now at 407 ppm of CO2, for example. And we can look at the ice core records and we can see over this very long million year time frame that CO2 ranged from about 280 ppm at a maximum to 180 ppm at a minimum which is really interesting when we now look at this longer time frame that we see our anthropogenic in, um, emissions are much higher than anything that we have seen in the last million years. But what we can do in addition, of course, is now look also at things like sea level. And what we can see when we look at, at sea level is again that we have that same seesaw structure. And so this tool tells us that if CO2 increases, it becomes warmer the ice sheet melt and the ocean rise and we can have up to a hundred over hundred meters of sea level change. So this provides us with a mean to look into the future. So what we can do now is look even further back in time and this is where geological records become really important and we can go back to times where CO2 actually was much higher. So we have a tip period that we call the mid-Pliocene where CO2 concentration were actually 400 parts per million as they are right now. So during that time period, we can now look what sea level did. And we can see that last time we had about 400 parts, million, uh, parts per million CO2 concentration. That sea level during that time was about 10 to 20 meters higher than it's today. Now that is really scary because we can now draw from this time period forward into the future. So we had 400 parts per million now. We know when the climate system equilibrates with the 400 parts per million that we should expect once again sea level, today's sea level, to also increase to plus 10 to 20 meters. So you can see how we use the past climate records of the past to inform what might happen right now, but also what happens into the future. And so my main message here is that we got the physics really well understood, that the ice core records showed us that the increase in CO2, the increase in temperature, and even the change in sea level is unusual in terms of its rate of change in what we see in the natural world. The geological record that reaches even the further back in time tells us where we might head and what we commit us and future generations to under higher CO2 concentrations. So we only have one Earth and to help us, um, the public, our policy makers, our governments to make informed decisions on how changes we can control might mm -hmm. affect the future, ice curls can tell us how quickly these changes will occur and what the end game is, what we're committing now and what we're committing future generations for. So really looking at the past really informs our choices and our possibilities for the future. Mm -hmm.